I cannot imagine how I would manage an environment without using maps, and we've added a new type of map in this release, and Chris is here, and we have to talk about that because we now have, what, four different types of maps that you can use in different situations, and I want to just briefly cover how they're different and what you would use them for. Okay, then. Here we go. Maps. So people love maps. So let's start with the new one. So you'll notice on many entity pages, so entity is things like a node, an interface, mm -hmm. a server, all sorts of things. A thing that owns another thing, or at least is related to another thing. Sure, yeah. So on many entity pages, if you look in the left, you'll see a new subview. We like our subviews in this release called map. So I'm going to click into this. And the first thing to note here is you've got nothing to configure. <laughs> so one of the things that we found in research was um, lots of people make maps, and then lots of people let them go out of date. Right. And so they become less and less useful. You look at a map when you're troubleshooting, you're like, I know this piece is wrong. I'll just ignore the whole map, because who knows what else is wrong? Well, but I don't really think that's that, that's part of it. But also, like with NetPath, the whole point of it is the the network is changing so quickly, you could not possibly manually configure yeah, it right. or set thresholds or anything yeah, else. Yeah, that's so, the root uh, cause. Yeah, so auto mapping in that case is absolutely necessary. And so we got so much feedback from users that said, well, can you just extend in that same capability to relationship mapping, that, yeah. that that's a really big part of what drove it. Yeah, particularly it. in scale environments, that mapping uh, automatically is important. So what we see here is we've got a map subview for this lab transit switch two. Okay. We can see uh, there's all sorts of different things going on here. This left connection is a dependency, so we'll map those out. We also do our topology connections. Basically, all of the data that we've been building up about relationships for years in network topology, in AppStack, which has a bunch of different types of relationships, um, all of that shows up here. So when you click on maps, you have the uh, node you came in on or the entity you came in on centered, and then everything that's connected to it directly attached, and we get some little bubbles that tell us more. Um, of course, we can click down to inspect and get more details about any of these things. It's all linked to the deep data we have in the details pages, so mm -hmm. you can click for the node details or interface details or volume or whatever you're on. And so in this case, also these uh, pop-up uh, performance metrics, these are going to be based on the type of relationship, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like you want different information depending on the type of relationship. Here we've got traffic utilization on a network topology relationship. Okay, So that's um, one example of that. The other example is when you uh, look at a group, now it becomes super interesting, right? Because everything in that group is something that the administrator has told us it's related. Mm -hmm. So we can put that all on one screen here. And uh, you see some of our fancy Zoom uh, changes here and some of our uh, relayout options. So we can see there's sort of a tree structure here. There's quite a bit going on. Um, and this contains everything in the group and what's directly connected to that. So whether it's a manually created group or a custom query-based group yep. um, or whatever it is, you can now map and display those relationships because you know they have something to do with each other. Yep. So there's a ton of detail and data available and through inspection here, um, but that's a quick look. Mm -hmm.